All right, it's going out. Just pick it yeah, right back so, up. Yeah, so I mean, like the, you know, where I'm at is it's kind of an interface between the old world and the new world, right? Like we're seeing more and more trouble in the old world and more and more kind of, you know, need for the new world, but the new world itself doesn't have that much infrastructure yet. Now, I, I will say that, you know, watching your videos, I'm very uh, amazed at how well you've thought through a lot of this, particularly on the front of like, um, the infrastructure around proposals and roles and like how you move through that, um, the bands and certain things like that, multipliers, token, uh, voice tokens, all that kind of stuff. Like, great, like amazing, really well done. And then how does that meet the real world in two ways? One, how do you plan and structure that and who does that, right? And I understand that it's a co-creative process, but I also think that the initial let's say the initial legwork is often done by the people who have the most experience or should be done to some degree by the people who have the most experience in that. And then two, how do you onboard people into that? How do they, number one, understand it, understand the, 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 what's being asked of them or what's being put forward, and then how do they interface with that going forward, right? And then how, how do you approve or who do you approve in what fashion and at what speed, how, you know, like, Somebody shows up the farm and is super enthusiastic, but I've watched people show up to the farm, be super enthusiastic, say they're going to be there every day uh, or every week, uh, every weekend, and then they, I never see them again, right? Uh, there's, there's also the exact opposite. Somebody's like, oh, you know, I'll come with time to time, and then all of a sudden they're showing up all the time. So there's always kind of layers of people coming in and out of agreements on this, and it's partially because there's not a, a like a what I consider to be like a job board where they can say, hey, let me just do this task. And then this task has a complete, like a, like a, a small fee record, you know, related to it. About and then I think sure. you had it not only from a task perspective, but also then a role perspective, right? I, 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 you had less of the task, more of the role, which I think is better from a like long-term commitment and also tracking um, like the stake that people have in the community mm -hmm. and providing value and assigning and attributing value for the goodwill or the time and energy that people have put into um, doing something like this, specifically if they're either not getting paid or let's say being underpaid. Um, so yeah, very impressed with the infrastructure you built. Um, realize that there's an adoption curve to it, obviously, as you know. Um, and now the question becomes, you know, twofold, like, how do how does a village adopt? And I, so I watched both your videos, of course. So one on kind of where I guess Haifa is going and and um, like kind of the new UI and you you kind of going through some of the different things and some of those different pieces and then showing us the old UI or the maybe the current UI. Oh yeah, the how um, to do it do. Yeah, exactly, and all of that, and then but also how like you can start the village, you can name the tokens, do the different things, assign certain things. Um, yeah, so I'm impressed um love it i mean i've got i think a million questions uh, i i would see around this um but kind of curious to um i guess curious on a few levels one uh any limitations you would see because my understanding is this is built on eos right it's kind of a fork of eos no um Everything we're building is layer one agnostic. Uh, okay. We've been building it on EOSIO, but we have a pathway right now already to be compatible with all the other blockchains. And okay. a lot of them are bridged anyway. So that's our role anyway, is we're talking with Web3 Foundation for Polkadot. Uh, we've talked with groups for Cosmos. Uh, we're looking into Terra and Celo and Hollow. So it's like all the aligned groups. We just want to make ourselves um, compatible with so then really what it looks like is they can log in they say okay i want to have i do but i want it to be on this layer one mm -hmm. you know and then you can talk with people in that layer one but every layer one also has bridges and by layer one i mean is it ethereum yep. is it cosmos yep. right and then they call bridge between them so Understood. all of that is unnecessary for us we're looking at more what's beyond the layer one what's the layer two the app i.e the coordination apps you know, in layer three, which is all what you're talking about, which is what's the structure, who does what, like, how do we get really practical and get stuff done? Because Web3 has been doing a lot of talking, you know, the last decade, yeah, really. like, how do we get acting, you know? Exactly. Um, and that's kind of where the real fun begins. Um, yeah. And I guess, like, knowing where you're at with that, like, what project yeah. is in that <laughs> phase three acting well, portion? <laughs> and then, and then, like, how are Ica you? is one of them. Well, sure. Yeah. So Haifa is the, yeah, it's kind of the meta of you're testing your own theories while building it. Right. Right. 
like I had gone on hi-fi at one point and I saw all the different roles and bands and layers. But when I, when I initially saw it, I didn't understand the band portion of it. Right. Like, so I saw the different roles and I saw like storyteller and then I saw the different price points. I was like, but I didn't understand uh, very like immediately what that represented or how that represented it. I also didn't understand whether or not or how applying and who was going to be seeing it who was voting on it, all those different things. Now, once, once I watch your video that show the kind of different versions of um, uh, um, Quorum and, and all those things, then I, I was like, okay, I see what, what's happening here. Mm. But again, how do you, like the, the, the challenge, right? Myself as a storyteller, yourself as a kind of you know, founder building something like this, it's like, how and when do I tell you what, right? How and when... Do I expose you to pieces of this infrastructure so that I'm not going to bore you by saying, okay, you have to watch three hours worth of videos to, to learn something. And at the exact same time, you do have to understand it fundamentally before you can join it, right? Like some elements of it to some degree, right? Um, um, I think there's many layers to that. Some things yeah. like a quest board, um, which is where everyone begins. That's yeah. super straightforward. Come in. This is the bounty for doing that. Got it. Exactly. People come in and do it. And, you know, part of the quest board is learning about it, like building 100%. bounties for watching this video that's going to tell you how to do it. Perfect. If it takes you three hours to go through the handbook, you know, and some of the introductory videos on the village, mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. going to be mandatory. I don't think we can get less than three hours, but three hours and you probably have the full understanding of what's going on there, how to show up. At it's least a hell of a lot better than, you know, theory. four to six yeah. hour orientations. That's the theory. And, you know, it's kind of where we're at. No, that's not true. Uh, but we can give the basics uh, in three hours of how it all kind of works, but totally. it's still going to take you some time to understand the culture and the people and where everyone fits in and all that stuff. Of course. Um, that's the key work we're doing right now. Like, so we've been for the last three years building the pieces of the game. Yeah. Um, but now we still need to figure out the rule book and what combinations come together. You know, we're building a card builder game. So the pieces are all these cards, but there's an infinite number of decks that could be made, right? You know, you could think of like Pokemon, for example, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how every do we kind of want them being is we're all playing the same game, but we're going to have our own unique combination of cards. And that's what's going to help us be more compatible and working together better and to go from one village to the next. So when you leave to the village, you go, okay, you're playing a slightly different version. Okay, you're playing this card instead of that one. Your quorum's 80 instead of 70. Like, I kind of get it, you know? Yeah, and technically you can also transfer from one currency to the next currency in a certain way, like blah, blah, blah. They're fungible in those ways. You, they're, they're interoperable. And, and, and I saw you, you have kind of different types of currencies, intra-currencies and inter-currencies and all that stuff. Like, fully following everything you're talking about. Like, I, I think I, I have a pretty solid grasp of what you're doing. Mm. Um, I guess my question is like, where are you now? Like, wh where's the, where's the, like the, the leading edge that you're at at this moment? Who, if anyone, have you onboarded into this game or are you planning on onboarding first? And then what do you think would that look like? Assuming that I would kind of roll this out at Valhalla slowly, but surely what, would be the ideal scenario, how or who is, let's say, funding storytelling around that, like blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be a right answer or whatever. I'm just trying to understand where you think this is at. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess where you think, because um, I would imagine that from like a infrastructural perspective, you want as many resources as possible to get to the, to the finish line of adoption, right? And then adoption being that it then self-perpetuates and the person who adopted it, who built the village coin or built the thing, then kind of adopts it within their own ecosystem, their own culture. And then the more people join, the more the entire network gains value. I'm, a, I'm guessing that that's the bridge or the, the, the cosm that you have to kind of pass through in the next time frame, right? Mm. Time frame being the next few years, I guess. Um, how is that? Am I correct in that? Are you, are you seeing that it that way? Um, yeah, similar. I'll just shift the goal. The goal isn't necessarily self-perpetuation or anything like that. It's uh, the regenerative renaissance. It's, I want to live in a regenerative village. I want my kid yes. to grow up in one. I'm about That's to great. have a kid in April. So it's kind of like, it's real for me. I'm like, all right, it's, it's yeah, time real. to stop thinking about it. You know, yeah. you know, I've been working on this intentional communities, eco village concept for a decade, you know, I've been part of some of them, but it's just I'll right. keep kicking it down the road of doing it. So that's my real personal goal. But anyway, um, there's a couple fronts here. Um, there's the Haifa front and what we're doing. I'll get into that just real brief. And then I think this 
it's not, it doesn't even have a name yet. A, a standing name is the Regenerative Village Builders Alliance. You know, this is where I actually see us spending most of our time. Yeah. And it's to answer all the questions you asked, you know, who does it? When you first set up a village, like you need some, you know, um, standing roles that are good for each village. That's our job as village builders. We want to go through and be like, okay, what's the best 15 default roles that every village will probably need? We and want to build that founders through that process to understand it. Because there's a there's a <laughs> there's a onboarding process. Like imagine I'm adopting a new CRM system like Salesforce. Salesforce needs to hire, have somebody to fucking help me adopt that into, <laughs> totally. into it, right? It's an example of that. It's the same kind of like process in a different way, obviously for different reasons, but you get what I mean? Like that's kind of, I see that as being like a key role, if that makes sense. Or well, piece. 100%. And I'll touch on this because we're going to be all over the place, but uh, this is what I see as part of the Regenerative Village Village Alliance or whatever it's called. Yep is we are running workshops, courses, retreats on that. So a yes. group of 30 people want to come together. They want to do a village. We're like, great. Um, actually, it's not even like that. We have anyone apply that wants to be part of this vision. They're like, yep, regenerative yep. villages. I got it. I don't have a tribe or community yet. I want one. Don't have one. I'm going to apply for this. Understood. Then our job is we take all these applications. We build them into cohorts where they have similar skill sets. We might use their human design. We make sure there's the right diversity. We're learning this. This is our job as the Village Village Alliance to keep launching these and figuring out the best you know, patterns and policies. Yep. Um, so we bring people together in a cohort. They come together in a physical place. And then I think this is, a, it's mandatory for me, but I think this is beautiful. They could have um kind of like a shedding every birthday and coming to age ceremony so we pair it with fasting and healing and a lot of journey work um but for the first month they don't introduce themselves to the rest of the cohort that they are now in, in and around the same mm -hmm. environment with until they have a chance to kind of shed who they were go through this space of imagining who they could be and then integrating that wisdom into who they want to be you know mm -hmm. and then they introduce themselves to their community from that place Mm -hmm. So everyone has a chance to kind of recreate themselves before. Um, so it's, yep. it could be really beautiful. Um, but then anyway, that's our task now is to then take this group and then help them set up their village. So teach them about the roles, how you do a do, you know, the yep. best practices that we've learned. Um, but it's a constant learning journey for us. So we're really just going to give them the best practices, try to set them up as much as possible, but we're going to continually learn from them. And every well, you're innovating as happen. you're, as you're teaching in a sense. Of course. Yeah. So, so I think this is a big part of it too, is some of the first villages are going to be village incubators that are going to be able to help other villages. 100%. Up. There's no doubt about that. Um, that being said, how do you see the exchange on that happening? People paying for, for this, this cohort? Are they getting, pay, or getting tokens for going through it? Uh, what, totally, like how, totally. what's, what's your version of the, let's say, tokenomics or economics around that? In my version, you know, everything has an exchange of energy. Um, sure. Our version is to try to make that explicit and try to find all the different forms of capital. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a number of ways. Some people are going to pay up front. Other people are going to pay with part of their village tokens that are about to get launched. You know, every you know new retreat that comes in, we're going to have to work at a unique deal that works for them. You know, our goal is the renaissance, helping people build regenerative villages. So we want to support people in that and make sure that we can support others. So you know but, everything but, could have a conversation of what's best for you know us in the group we could standardize it if we find something that just really seems to work you know maybe awesome. it's like half paid up front you know half tokens in their village concept you know maybe we do a token swap you know there are some ideas sitting on that but really i think that's kind of up to whoever forms this regenerative village alliance because it, yeah. it, it is partly egos but um uh, the biggest part of it is people want to be part of a co-creation. So a lot of the, the details around how this RBA thing is going to run aren't flushed out yet because it's kind of the job of the people who fill the foundation of it to do it. Um, and I'm talking to you and about, uh, you know, a dozen or half a dozen others that I think are going to serve as the foundation for this new alliance. So they each are bringing in their own ecosystem perspective and wisdom with them. Yeah. Um, so that's a call I shared with you is three other people that I was talking to. That's all kind of weaving together here. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, I wasn't able to watch that yet, but I I, did, I kind of opened it up and I, I put it as a, a task for myself to, to watch. Um, yeah. OK. So you're seeing it as let's build a council or a circle. Let's call it that. Right. Uh, let's build an initial founder circle around um, this RVA. 
and then let's figure out a education slash onboarding process that has some exchange. Like you said, it could be them paying some money or doing whatever uh, a money resource, let's say some resource um, and potentially a, a, a either token swap or having a proportion of their initial minting of their tokens or their system um, to try and get as accelerate as much as possible, but also have buy-in essentially um or or some like accountability on their side um to doing the actual process learning the actual process going through it and then giving a time frame to that process again again i guess right like a start and end date or it's kind of a continuous process once they mm. start but but at least a an initial kind of seed phase you seed to sprout phase let's say um I might have, um, I'd, I'd say yes to that, but I think we skipped a few steps. So sure. I'll, I'll give you the whole kind of picture yeah. is first we're doing this crowd pooling, crowdfunding, you know, but crowd pooling, because yeah. we're trying sure. to bring in more than just financial capital. People are able to bring their, you know, land capital, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, wisdom, experience, social. Yes. I, I was doing something called like a crowd pooling system called green seeds years ago before crypto and all that stuff. Excellent. <laughs> and when, when I started Valhalla, I was, call, I was calling it Green Seeds. And it was a crowdfunding platform that enabled, that it was gonna value uh, actions that people were taking socially, like if they shared or liked or did certain things, if they created content, we would, they would whatever with time and with money or resource of any kind. So, mm -hmm. you know, been thinking about this kind of stuff for, for a minute. So anyway, love that. Just want to throw that out there. I feel uh, very aligned to that, but <laughs> I love um, it. yeah. Okay, so crowd pooling, yeah. Okay, well, actually, let me bring up the. So essentially, after they're successful with the crowdfunding, so a group has already, or at least an individual at minimum, has come together with the vision. They did a crowd pooling where the people are like, yep, we love that vision. We're going to put resources towards it. Mm -hmm. After they're successful at that, they have their land, they've purchased their land, they've gone through those initial setup. That's when they would come to the RBA to actually go through that um, retreat process. Mm -hmm. So they already have resources, they already have land, they've already come together and committed value. So they're committed to this, right? They're mm -hmm. invested. That's when they're actually going to show up and then go through the, the learning process. So you see it as a post land purchase. Right. At least for the first ones, because the first thing yeah. we're doing is we're going to do the crowd pooling. We're going to support one. Actually, I think what we came to on that call yesterday, but this is still up for us to create, is I think we get 12 initial village sites across the world, all geographically diverse. Um, and also culturally diverse. Yep. And those will be our first cohort of villages that we won crowdfund for. And we do a lot of marketing around that. So we can come in and you know support the village they want to be a part of. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll go through an open source process of them learning how to go through this process of creating a regenerative village. You know, So how do they do their roles? What's their structure? How do they design their incentives? All of that, right? Yep. Uh, but each village is learning out loud. We're coming together weekly, bi-weekly to share and cross um, pollinate those learnings. Mm -hmm. And then we as RVA is taking all of this in and designing what we think is that 13th model, which is coming out of this. It's like, what's the best of all of our learnings? And that's the first generation. And then every mm -hmm. generation we go through this, we refine that you know, the 13th village that's with us, which is this new model we're creating together. Yeah. Um, and we continually hone that. Um, so that's kind of the process I see right now as we focus first on let's get the, you know, let's find the catalyst that's already out there. There's so many of them. They're already applying to us to want to launch their villages under this model. Cool. We let the catalyst kind of come and the catalyst, the person that's, you know, driving it, they're putting together the crowd pooling. They've found the land. They're like, yep. And this is the vision. I'm that we the have. catalyst of my community, for for example, or one hundred percent. You know, one of of course, but the the, yeah, I hear you there. Okay, but this is where these tools are really interesting because a lot of villages, at least one that I've seen, they fail when the catalyst turns into a demigod or this founder type and holds onto too much power. It, right? It, 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 they survive because of that at the beginning, but they also fail because of that long term potentially. Or what happens is that they. They're, they're, it's not that so much that just that they fail, it's that they're limited. They're limited oh, yeah. by the amount of capital. So that's where I'm at right now, right? I'm limited by the amount of capital and the amount of time that I can essentially hand out decisions and or power and or blah, 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 blah. And I need to ad adopt some kind of game economics or role task-based economics um, that essentially enable people to kind of interface without just doing it for money, but also having a stake or totally. share and changing the, and then tracking that whole system beyond verbal, 
Because that's the other thing is that like, I love, like there's a lot of people who are involved at Valhalla, for example, in our community here, but it's all like a verbal agreement at this moment, essentially. And that, now mm. there's some, there's some um, let's say more formal, like, okay, you do this, you get paid that. But again, it's being paid out of either, you know, let's say a company bank account or my bank account or whatever it is, but it's still, it's still, um, it's still kind of like uh, game 1.0 version, let's say, or web 1.0, web 2.0 version of it, let's say. Not, it's not yet integrated into automatic systems that enable people to, like everyone has a common wallet, we're all using common currencies, this is blah, 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 blah. Now, the common denominator in this case is like, we're using Canadian dollars, let's say, right? But the, but there's no, um, there's no tracking or system for giving out or handing out um, like you said, things that are earned, like voice tokens or um, goodwill, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, I think your what you're proposing, what, what you guys are building is is the right, like I fully agree with this. This is really the right direction. And like kind of the only other conversation I'm having in this space is is somewhere, something with like, um, I spoke to, you know, you must have know Raymond, um, who uh, one of the coders of Holochain. Oh, yeah, Raymond. yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah, so you know he he's, awesome. he's great. Yeah, he was he wants to he, he's like Mark. I would love to build like a you know a, a dev team that's willing to build tools for something like this. And then and then yeah, but obviously they're way many steps behind um, in terms of things in terms of like actually UI UX and and systems and blah 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 blah. blah. But he's kind of you know we're, we're we're in conversation about certain things like that. But your way, I mean, you you've clearly given this a lot of thought. And a lot, and you've gotten a lot of feedback clearly by people who have built community. I can see that. I, you're you're clearly, like lo- like, far along that process. And I think that where I'm at, and where I think the, where I think the realistic reality of the handoff is going to be, is that there's a there's a bridge between let's say game A and game B, right? Or between like current paradigm and new paradigm where current paradigm has more of an oligarchy kind of vibe or dictatorship kind of vibe because that's just where things are coming from and then it's going to transition slowly into these things while doing it in a way that everyone's participating and the adoption curve of the technology the adoption curve of people showing up onto the apps or onto the, the the boards to vote to ask for you know submit proposals to create badges to create all these things like that adoption curve is is highly necessary for it to mm. work and highly necessary for the person who's in the oligarchical position to feel comfortable that it's going in the right direction as well. Cause it's going to be both, right? Like there, there, there's some amount of like goodwill and whatever, but then there's also like, okay. So I'll give you an example. When Valhalla first started, we had 10 circles. We had 10, what we called committees, those committees, you couldn't be in more than a certain number of committees, certain committees, you couldn't be in the same committee. Uh, so you couldn't be in accounting and legal and uh, uh, let's say biz dev or what we called, um, uh, what was it called? What did I call it? Anyway, whatever. Like you couldn't be doing budgeting and accounting because then if you you can, you can be corruptible, right? I, mm. I didn't dictate the budget. And then I also dictate whether or not I gave that budget to people. Those are two things that should be separate, right? Because one keeps the other accountable. Um, so examples like that. The, the challenge that we had was, we weren't number one experienced enough at the time. And number two, we were too small of a group to have 10 committees at that moment because everyone was in the same committee. And then we were all, we were spending so much time doing meetings and we had no infrastructure for actually tracking, again, the goodwill, the tasks, the roles. Blah, 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 blah. So what you've built actually solves my, my problem back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the, the next challenge to that is how do you onboard people into understanding that? And who and when do you do that? At what phase of people showing up at, at the farm, for example, showing up at the village, do you say, okay, we trust you, right? And like you said, there's a rite of passage, I think, that, that comes with that. So what we used mm. to do is you had to have three members, you picked one, mind, body, spirit, and then they gave you three challenges, mind, body, spirit challenges. Whether you completed them or not, um, it was less about that. It was more about like, did you try? Did you like do it? Mm. And then those three members gave a council of like whether or not we thought they did the thing and then the, the rest of the community voted anonymously. And then we had to have like a, uh, I think it was 60, 40 split, 60 people, 60% of people had to agree. Again, a lot of that fell to the water because it's just, there's so, we didn't have the infrastructure for tracking all of these things. Mm. And there was just too many um, 
we were too young. We didn't have enough infrastructure physically at the farm. There was a lot of other things like financial infrastructure, blah, 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 blah. Now we're in a better state in general. So all of that can come back to life, but now it can come back to life through a system that people could see. But again, when? When do I, or a village, forget me, when mm. does the community feel like, you know what? Yeah, it's time for us to integrate you into this infrastructure, right? Is it right away? In certain cases, yes. For certain things, yes. For other things, maybe not, right? Um, it, it, so it's just, it's almost like where or how far does game A run, run the torch and then how far and where does game B pick it up? If that makes sense, because that's sure. <clears throat> well, I think those are two different questions. Because if we have a village operating in game B, your question yeah. of you know when do they join the village is a little bit different than you know when does a game A village transition to a game B village. Um, but they have a similar logic behind answering them. Um, yeah. Well, first to you know provide some foundation. I think you know centralized is how I see game A. You know everything's yeah, concentrated and centralizing okay. and blah. Yeah. Game B is decentralizing. It's spreading back out and redistributing. Cool. cool. That's a spectrum, right? Yes. And there's not necessarily good or bad. You know, uh, beneficial. There's benefits. Uh, optimistic to both. dictatorship both. is great. You know, if everyone yeah. loves the dictator and the dictator is all wise and all knowing. Exit. you know let's have a dictator you know <laughs> there, yeah, there there are yeah, exactly it, 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 <laughs> there, there's a lot of communities that have survived off of that reality right? it I needs to move to decentralizing over time it needs I to agree. move further down that spectrum in order to be sustainable yes um but depending on where a project starts it can only move so far if it starts out highly centralized it can only move so far down towards decentralization if it already started off you know, semi-decentralized to begin with. And that's what's really interesting with this, you know, catalyst post a founder crowdfunding model is, you know, the catalyst is the founder. We need that. Every project needs to start off centralized to some degree. Otherwise, it's just not going to start. You know, they kick it off. But once the crowdfunding is done, that's when all the founders come in. And everyone starts off on the same footing to earn the same tokens for the village. It's not like one person already owns 80 when they show up. You know, 80% and they have to slowly like scoop their way back. You know, everyone starts on the same footing, the same voice holdings, it's the same level for hundreds or thousands of people. So then you get hundreds of thousands of initial founders of your village or dozens, depending on your scope. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting because it starts us further down the centralizing pattern. Which I which I think is like where I want to. So like we went into decentralized, went back to centralized. I got us to a certain state. Now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to decentralize again and re-attempt the circles, re-attempt the system, but now with tech to support. You need well structure. Um, you need a lot yeah, of structure. Need the tech supports with that. You know, exactly. Historically, cultures have done it. What was their tech? Their tech was stories. Their tech was norms sure. and social boundaries. Like, you sure. know, indigenous communities had just as much tech. It was just a, you know, it wasn't as different visible version, on a different computer. Version of it. Right. So communities, they need that structure. And that's what we're here to provide. Not necessarily answer it for them because we don't know. But we yeah. need to provide the, the primitives and the building blocks that allow them. So you ask the question, when does a village let a member in? We don't know. But what we've done is we've allowed you to issue a badge that gives somebody the right to create a new member. Yeah. So that means and I loved, the I also freedom loved for villages the, to kind of figure that out, right? Well, I also love that you had like a multiplier that went up, but you can also have a multiplier that was an apprentice level, which went down, meaning like, okay, we see your value. We see that you're helping us in the farm, but you, you're not an experienced farmer. Like this is the first time you ever walked out into a field kind of thing. We, there, there needs to be, let's say multipliers that were bands essentially, right. That, that kind of bring you into different layers of how much value you're really creating um, to some degree, right. All the while recognizing your input nonetheless and your, your, your journey in that category, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. So those badges, I mean, that's get one of those primitives that opens up an infinite field of possibilities. We haven't done this, but for example, you could have a, you know, apprentice journeyman master, Yes. badge category you know mm -hmm. journeyman is a, a 1x you know a master yep. gives you a 2x and a apprentice cool. gives you a 0.5 whatever but then the community gets to say yep that person's a master at their craft we're going to multiply everything they're doing and their voice in that category by whatever you know and that by whatever is really interesting because that allows every community to have an incredible amount of flexibility in how they design their village Understood. Um, so our job as you know village builders is to kind of hold the space, you know, get best practices, but a lot of it is still unknowns. 
Um, we've sure. done the best job at kind of creating primitives. So that's where Haifa's at. Haifa's been designing these primitives, building them, testing them on ourselves for three years. Yep. Um, and now we're just to the point where like, okay, we're ready to open this up and bring other groups into this. So we've been working on the all the features that are required to other groups be able to actually use this and spin theirs up. We plan to have that done in the next few months. Um, okay. But in the meantime, right now we're getting the, the groups together. They're going to be part of that first cohort and helping them start because a lot of their stuff's going to start on spreadsheets before they move into a do, because there's going to be a lot of changes. Once you move it into the do, it kind of finalizes it. And every change yeah. has to be a vote that slows things down by design. That's important that it slows things down. But in the beginning, you when you're still with... trying to figure it out, like you want to have sweeping changes and dramatic stuff Absolutely. and you want to do it quick. That's exactly start with a spreadsheet. So that's what we say. <laughs> Everyone in the first couple of months, they figure out a spreadsheet. Once they have their patterns, right? They're like, yep, this is kind of what we want. Good. Yep. You have an official vote, you bring it into the do. Everyone signs and ratifies their first policy. This is how we're going to run our project. Yeah. And that's the constitution now for that village. They come together, they agree on their rule set, they formalize it into agreement, and then they play it. And again, that could be hundreds of thousands of people coming together at the same time to be like, yep, we see this vision together. This is how we're going to do it. Let's go. Totally. Right. Totally. I think you're, you're, <laughs> I, I think you're spot on on all of it. So, let's like what are okay so quickly just quickly answering this question haifa as a business model talking game a here are you planning on charging money for inter for people participating or building using these systems like what how are you see that Right. Like, well, Haifa is not a game a a business, so we don't have a game I, a business model. <laughs> but I'll tell you the game B business model. Sure. Um, we're a network and an ecosystem, right? And every network yeah. and ecosystem is as valuable as the size and you know value flowing through that network and ecosystem. Sure. You know what Haifa wants to be is the connective tissue, just like Haifa and the forest. Haifa is named mm -hmm. after the hails, the hairs on the mycelial yep. network. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's our purpose. Is we want to be that connective tissue. How that works is every village that wants to be part of the Haifa ecosystem mm -hmm. they have to purchase and stake haifa and they have to purchase and stake more of it depending on what features they want but what's cool about this is there's not a cost then they're not paying a monthly cost unless they're adding extra services there's stuff that haifa will provide that's kind of like bonuses so it's a little bit of a freemium model that either you have to burn haifa which is going to be the probably the most rare or you just have to stake more take it yeah. And we, what we're saying is we want you to be invested in this ecosystem. What's okay. cool is if you don't like it, you could actually sell your Haifa and potentially even sell it for a profit. So villages could come in here, they can access a tool, and maybe they even make money using it. That's kind of cool uh, if they ever sell. But what we really want is everyone to have a fractional ownership of this whole Haifa ecosystem. But okay. simultaneously, if Haifa is launching them, it owns a fractional share of all of the villages and projects and companies and everyone who's using Haifa. And anyone who can coordinate can use Haifa. We're starting with villages, or I am, but other people in Haifa, they're focused on other things, like a food yeah, co-op in Peru. For any group of any kind you know? that needs to coordinate fractional. So this fractional is how Haifa kind of is, is working, is we want yeah. to be that connective tissue for this regenerative renaissance and all the different capacities. Um, and then if institutional investors, they want to invest in systems change, we look like an index fund. We own a fractional share of all of these projects. If you invest into us, you're yep. being able to get exposure to this whole renaissance. So that's how Hype is positioning itself. Um, and then if it is pulling and invested in institutional capital, which we're already having those conversations and we will, then that money flows to expand and grow the whole ecosystem. Maybe kickstart new villages. And then where there's you know whole ecosystem owned villages. And then if you're part of Haifa, maybe we have this retreat that every village gets to book out one week a year and we all collectively mm -hmm. own this retreat place and we all get to, it's like, that's the type of stuff we're going to start doing with Haifa as we're moving with an ecosystem. Understood. So where are you at in terms of, um, have you decided what amount of Haifa people would need to buy and then stake uh, and what that translates into, are you um, kind of one-to-one? -one we, we haven't started, we haven't figured that out yet. Um, okay. One, because Haifa doesn't have a market price yet. So first we're gonna have to figure out what the real market value is before we start pinning things to it. Because if we say it's 10 Haifa, but Haifa ends up being a hundred dollars, that's prohibitive. Yeah. So we haven't formalized that yet. What we have is all of the, the blueprints for it. So we have the infrastructure to do it. We just have to put the numbers in. The first projects that we bring into Haifa, which we'll be starting in the next month or two, um, we're going to subsidize all that. So they're not going to pay anything. Um, okay. We're going to take care of it. We're going to help them the initial, out a lot yeah. of support. So you and the first cohort we do, 
our job is to help them and we're going to make it free for them. Um, and we're doing this together. So that's kind of the benefit of being part of the first cohort too. Um, so we're still in this, you know, exploration phase, which is the perfect time I think for you to show up because you're not stepping into this where there's too much rigidity. All the tools are kind of here, but we still need to fine tune them, tweak them, make some hard decisions in some certain areas. But anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so good, uh, great to know, great to understand. Um, um, and I guess you mentioned it quickly, but I guess there is some level of financing or institutional money you think you're going to end up raising to continue, I guess, the, the cash flow or the resource flow, if you want to call it that, um, necessary to essentially continue, number one, innovating, number two, kind of handing out roles and or tasks related to the innovation of this system. And I guess three is like that allows you essentially seed capital, um, pun intended, to essentially start different versions of these either villages or different circles, essentially, um, as you see fit. Is, th is that kind of part of your vision at the current phase? Uh, maybe not exact current phase, but is that part of what you think is going to sure. happen? Sure. Um, Haifa is a radically transparent organization, so I'll just be straight with all this. Um, Haifa has had some angel rounds. Uh, we've raised, at so one point, it was north of $2 million. Right now, our treasury is sitting at about half a million. Uh, mm -hmm. We're halfway through our seed round, raising $7 million. So we've got maybe about three and a half committed to that. Okay. Um, and right, so that seed round is what's going to take us from now until where Haifa is liquid on exchanges and people are actually buying it and staking it to use it. So this seven million is meant to get us to where we have an okay. ecosystem that's actually working, and then Starting after that point we're focused on Hypho. Yeah. yeah, understood. Okay, interesting. Um, and we're already talking to institutional investors. They love it. They want to see some traction. So that's kind of where we're at. It's, it's all right. And it's, <laughs> it's timed appropriately. So it's all traction now. I get. I I I, I fully get where you're at. Because they okay, come right. in here, they're like, "Yep, we love it. We see it. All right, connect them, and we'll start buying it." So we're like, "Okay, cool. So let's start connecting it." And anyway, yeah, you need the first projects to be functionally using the the ecosystem. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Okay. What do you see as next steps? in general like what do you what do you, yeah what do you see as next steps um next steps is forming the foundation for this again to be determined alliance mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so i'm having conversations with people i think would be awesome i'd say watch that and then bring in yes. similar people if you have to see everyone else or if you see that we need to have someone part of this group cool let's bring them in and build that core um, then we're going to hone in on the 12 projects we want to launch for, and then we're going to do the crowdfunding for it. So we have some crowdfunding platforms we're going to work with. So put them together, pitch their stories and go and tell the marketing around this and raise the capital. Mm -hmm. Cool. Once that's done, uh, we're behind the scenes working on the tech all the way. Um, and this is probably going to take a couple months to get to this point. Um, once the crowdfunding is done, we're going to try to bring everyone together for representatives for all 12 projects that would like it. One physical location, we might be converging on a village and we'll go through the initial steps and we can go through this whole, uh, you'll see it, it's the up game versus or an, combined with um, moral imagining, mm -hmm. which is on my feed. So that's the video I shared. You'll learn a little bit more yeah, about I those saw, concepts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we could take people through that process and get them prepared and they can, they, dream up and vision what their you know regenerative villages are going to look like and be and then design them so we'll do that all in person then everyone will go to their places and start building their villages and then we'll document and share that process so that, i think that's where the key is and probably for the next year or so is documenting and sharing that process and then all the villages across the world are going to be able to you know follow along and we'll open source it and we'll just kick off the renaissance really is where i'm seeing this um, so that's, you know, the better part of the next year or so, um, throughout that time, we're learning the patterns. So this is where we're, we're reinforcing what's the successful pattern for a village. We're codifying it, we're building templates, um, mm -hmm. so that by, you know, 2023 or whatever, we have the year of the initial village offering where we open the platform, anyone can come on raise for their village, their successful patterns and templates that they're going to be able to follow that'll give them a we could kind of reverse it instead of a 95% failure rate. Maybe we could have a 95% success rate. You know, as long as you follow these successful patterns, like you're pretty much going to succeed. Um, we would love to get to that point. And then we're off to the Renaissance. And I think once we have that traction, I mean, 
there's so many people and projects that they want this. It's just a, a big hill. So anyway, this is kind of what I'm seeing as the next steps and you know forming together. But you know, it's moving fast, so who knows? <laughs> well, okay. So I'm interested. Uh, like I'm a yes. Uh, where I think I can do a lot of legwork is over the next few months, I'm going to make a very accurate financial map um, focused a little less, focused on kind of a few layers of thought, okay? So essentially, I'm going to have kind of game A, um, let's say normal operational businesses, people come to the farm, they want to buy coffee, they want to sure. buy a product off our shelf, how does that work? how much money is going into certain things and what level of membership from like an ecosystem do I get to have on a game A version of the reality, okay? Operating as a farm. Then there's game B that starts to in implement things like uh, the ability for people to own small stakes and small things, a row of garlic, an NFT for a row of garlic, an NFT for, for example, uh, 10 chickens, representing essentially the pre-purchase of a commodity, but that is in itself kind of like a security. It's almost like you're, you're, you're buying the row of garlic, we can buy back from you at a set rate, therefore you're gonna have their roughly a set return and, uh, or you can replant it. Mm -hmm. And let's say with the garlic, get three rows and then you get a second generation <laughs> NFT, blah, 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 which is essentially crowd pooling and funding the growth that I need to, or the community needs to get to the next level of equipment, and 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 blah, 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 blah. And then eventually having NFT style or token style ownership which is then kind of foundational members that invest a certain amount of money to get voice token blah blah, blah. like so everything you're saying is com is in line with what i see um but i see kind of three layers right or that's i, I know it's going to happen in three layers or uh, i say i know at our current state i believe it is going to happen in these three formats people get involved they see they start showing up okay talk to me about membership they get involved in membership on a low commitment kind of level, then they get really interested, then they want to start investing, they start investing there, but that gives them access to eventually becoming mm. kind of a owner member, founder member, if you want to call it that, right? I think that's the natural progression. And then there's rites of passages within that to cross that chasm, essentially, right? Um, and those rites of passages are like tutorial videos, understanding ecosystem, understanding uh, how, you know, whatever smart contracts, NFTs, investments, land, what, how big the land, like there's just a million questions people have and, and, mm. and a million ways that people are gonna wanna contribute, blah, 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 blah. That's where I think I'm going to have a very accurate financial model that's gonna model us into that future. I'm currently working on that, like down to like, okay, we're releasing 10 garlic NFTs at. Fifteen hundred and fifty-one dollars, like down to the dollar. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have like a version of that that I think is very replicable for other communities as well, um, but is gonna be like a fully functioning version, and it's in an ecosystem that actually has finance people. Like like there, there are people who show up and there are people who live at the farm right now, right? So it's an existing ecosystem, existing thing. We have existing products, uh, existing. We have fifty thousand garlic, for example. I have you know, 10 NFTs, garlic NFTs, which I've done the graphics for, I have an artist who's done it. <laughs> no, and no, no. I have to, all 10 of them pre-sold if I want, right? So, but I haven't, I want to model it all out before I do anything, right? Right. I, I don't want to start setting up a game. I want the game to be a win, 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 without a doubt, right? Um, as well as have people really have ownership or feel a sense of ownership on these different things. And I don't know if you have, do you have another call at this, uh, on the hour? Um, actually, I don't think I do, but let me verify. Okay, because I, I do have to go shortly, but I... No, I'm good for the next half hour at least. Okay, great. So here's where I'm at. Like, I think it makes a ton of sense that I obviously continue to map this out on a spreadsheet. Yep. And then build versions and models of like what I, like let's say I'm one of 12 or Valhalla is one of 12 projects that we think is going to go through that well i'm going to be pretty goddamn ready for a version of something that makes sense here and i know that the adoption curve of this on my end is going to be okay let's start the game a version of this right mm -hmm. get the memberships going get people accustomed to certain things start integrating and building the you know the tokens start building the patterns start building the videos that people will watch the tutorials and then like you said i think there is value in um I would love to do kind of a, a weekly vlog of sorts, documenting physically what's happening on the farm, but also documenting the infrastructure that is being built behind the farm or within the farm to continuously make this happen. 
I think that two pronged approach, like physically following characters that are interesting and, and hey, there's this thing that, you know, something, somebody, uh, one of the machines broke on the farm and now we have to figure something out. And, and here's the drama that plays out in real life, human life. And then here's the, also the infrastructure of like, we're coming out with garlic NFTs. What do you guys fucking think? You know what I mean? Like this is fucking, nobody's ever done this before. With, from my law, knowledge, we were going to be the mm. first ever, um, let's say commodity based pre-sale of farm based product NFTs on the planet. Okay. I, I, yes, there are some people who sell wine or product through NFTs, but there, there, I don't know of anyone who's planting and then giving you the opportunity to replant and actually have a stake in harvest, if that makes sense. I, I don't think there's another project on the planet doing that uh, at the moment. That being said, it's like, that's where I think, or what I want to figure out is like, how do I, where and when, how do I finance that? And then how do mm. I document that? But I don't have obviously the time to build all the infrastructure and ecosystem you've built here. Cause it's going to like, it took you, it's going to take me a long time to do that too. And I don't want to do everything right. Like I want to plug into an existing ecosystem and, and kind of play a role within that. Um, while not making a th all the decisions up front without a doubt, cause I, I can't, but giving it like a really start solid starting point based on spreadsheets existing mm. maybe roles badges um tasks so certain things again starting this physically at the farm like literally physically building a board at the farm with tasks and roles and a and a price for the result not a price per hour but a price per result and then i see and i don't know if i told you about this but like maybe like a geofencing scenario where if people show up to the farm they're mining coins in that way right um it's a thought at least i have yeah I yeah and you can do um, you can even have whiteboards that have the, the roles and the yes. role will say what the actual task list is, what they're expected to do. And then you can have just a freaking magnetic name with who's yes. filling that role. <laughs> or, or just even yeah. somebody from writing it in and do it. So, so I'm, I'm almost want to create like the, the dumb version of a dumb, the non-smart or tech version of this, because it, that's most eco villages. The mutable version. The... Yeah. Most <laughs> eco villages start yeah. with, right? Like if I look at many eco villages have been to this kind of how it works, um, with various degrees of success in that. But I think um, what's interesting about where we're at right now is I think we have a lot of people willing to show up and like, we're gonna have a full calendar of events for 2022. Um, we're talking about men's circles already. We're, we're I'm supposed to be running to a, a workout and then a meeting with one, one of the guys. We're, we're gonna schedule seven men's circles. We're gonna do seven women's circles. We're gonna be doing mm. ceremonies of all kinds. Um, we're doing harvest, garlic harvest parties. We're doing farm table dinners. Like I've got all the little pieces in place. Now I need to make all the agreements with every single person. And so what I'm currently doing is modeling every version of that. Okay, here's the um, uh, men's circle model business plan. Here's who needs to get paid for what. And they're task specific, meaning we need firewood for the thing, right? Here's $25 for the wood and the person who's gonna chop the wood and prepare it so that it's ready for the men's circle right next to the fire pit or whatever it is. Always having, um, always having it be a fraction of the, of the amount of money or the amount of resource, if you will, that's coming in from that event. So that, mm. and there obviously there has to be some like minimum, I guess, right? Cause certain things cost a certain minimum amount of money, if that makes sense. Um, or minimum amount of resource or time or energy, right? Um, so all that being said, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I think the documentation piece of that is gonna be fucking huge, right? Like, I, I, cause I know, I know that the recruiting of village builders and people who are willing to play this game B dynamic and kind of co-create this, they need it. There almost needs to be a cadence or a, or a way that they participate by watching first or seeing it unfold. And then they're like, oh, I, I, you know, I can help that in this way. And then they get involved. And it's almost like a snowball effect or kind of an avalanche of, of, of momentum. That's my guess of what's going to happen. 100%. And templating. You know, I could say that over yes. and be obnoxious. Templating, templating. You know, <laughs> templating, templating. No, no, you know, everything you're talking about, each one could be a packaged quest. And all of this is what we want to put in that initial template for a village. So you've yes. done all of this work. Fantastic. We don't need to keep reinventing that then. Let's template this out and every group could start with it. And they already and have some preloaded quests, some preloaded roles. That's you know, exactly right. Like, yeah, you get that's it. exactly right. But because I'm templating, I, I made, I'm making templates for um, product, services, 
events um, and sponsorships. Those are four, let's say, initial offerings that the farm or a village will, will have, right? It either sells product and resells product. It either creates services and then has to have like some agreement with the people who provide those services and a calendar of sorts. It has to do events and there has to be agreements on what minimum events need to do certain things. And then it'll have sponsors. Um, and those sponsors could be like angel kind of donors or more like, you know, angels of sorts, but it can also be like, um, I have a company that's willing to sponsor us with tools and clothing for farmers and they just want content out of it. Um, mm. And if, as long as I have enough of all four of those things rolling, I've got a base team that can make that happen. If I have enough members that are paying, let's say a certain amount a month, then I've got a base salary to start with an existing co let's say founders team that then eventually builds the circles that become the torch bearers or the torch lighters or whatever you called them. Um, but I love that term and I love the flow of it. And I think it's Burning Man inspired, right? But the yeah. the idea of like, all, so like that's where I'm at. I'm at the model stage at the moment. I've done a lot of the models, but now I'm about to fucking go on a very big journey on this. Like I've mm. got, I've got like, I just need to kind of finalize the different pieces of it. I've got the NFT model here. I've got the event model there. I've got this thing, but I need to just kind of finalize and then bring it all into one like master, let's say mark um, 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 operations plan. And then it, it, it's a mix between budgeting and then operations. I'm making the sheets both budget ready and operation ready, at least dumb operation ready to then be ready for more of a smart operation, which is more what you've built. Right. Sure. Like, I think well, team Haifa. So let me play out what it would look like in this decentralized world. So, you know, Haifa wants what you're suggesting to bring, because this is what we are looking at is building all these templates. Uh, you have an incredible amount of knowledge. So Haifa would literally could pay you to do this. And maybe it's just in Haifa. So you're just getting shared equity in this and great. So you're bringing this, you're plugging it in. Haifa wants this, you've got it. Let's show you what this model actually looks like to be able to earn value from an ecosystem by having provided that. Um, or this all gets baked into RVA and this is just something that we're bringing with its very village centric focus. So I see a couple of places this could exist or it could exist in Valhalla. And if you're providing this value, then I want to show some way for you to be able to plug these templates into Haifa, the ecosystem and get some value out for that. Because then if we can create a model I think it's where every probably village is incentivized to create their templates, I think it is a combination of all three. I'm just, you know, walking it through with you. No, yeah, no, I, and it's a, it's a beautiful, like, I think you're walking, yeah, but I think it's all three. The beauty is that Valhalla mm -hmm. is this, like, it's literally, like, it's, I'm going to run the experiment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the model, run the experiment, and then be like, oh, by the way, I changed the template this way. Yeah, <laughs> and then right. instantly iterate that template. Because that's every, everything I do as a consultant and marketing, and, and now I'm doing a lot of CFO style work, CF, CMO and CFO and the combination of both those things, as well as the operations of both those things. Meaning I'm storytelling and then I'm, I'm tracking whether or not I can grab attention Ooh. and make that work. And I'm budgeting the entire thing and templating the entire thing. I'm doing that for a lot of companies at the moment. Um, and it's like really like it's working. It's amazing how, how good I am at budgeting shit. Um, and it's really amazing how good I am at storytelling some shit. But I'm less in the weeds of doing the story now. Although for Valhalla, I'm fully in the weeds. I love, I fucking love it, mm. right? Because like you said, I, I want to raise a family and have, raise a community more even for me. Uh, that is that is operating in this way. I'm super fucking excited about that. So um, yeah, I, I'm... I'm very happy to make, finish, finish. It's an iterative process forever, but at least a version one of those templates in every variation of what mm. I see the initial foundational elements of a community coming together work on, right? If I have those templates, I know that then I just need to apply them to a calendar and then eventually apply them to roles and tasks that essentially then get filled because as long as I have the events and I have enough roles and tasks, and then I have enough uh, demand for those events, then everything is going to work within that ecosystem. And I release events slowly as the demand is there. Meaning, I'll never mint an NFT until I've sold all of them. Sure. Never. I'll because as as long as I constantly have that success, meaning I pre-sell what I'm doing, um, then well, I'll always have essentially a certain amount of demand that is fueling sure. the next wave of people wanting access to the supply. That's so smart. It, it's exactly where I'm at. I, I, I think we're to some degree, let's say, I don't know, at least a year out from like a minting scenario or an owner founder 
um, token scenario, but I think I can seed all of that um, much sooner. Well, I want to challenge you because maybe we're not a year out because if Valhalla joins this um, process to do the fundraising, then I hope we're only a couple months out. <laughs> so yeah, I'll actually show you literally what I'm, I'm envisioning. Yeah, uh, and I read this. I read this document that you, you sent over as well. I didn't <laughs> click on all the different links, of course. Oh, you know, of course. Have, <laughs> there was a little too many for me to, uh, to go down one. every single one, but yeah. Um, garden mirror whatever reason the link didn't actually work so i'll have to update that but this is what i'm actually seeing it look like is this is a campaign that's put together right now what did they do they raised money for the infinite gardens and ethereum film right mm -hmm. um, so i'm planning on using the same platform for raising for each one of these villages so every village comes up they say what they're all about their funding goal and this is where i think your wisdom is going to be able to come in is what is their soft cap so I put that in the well, structure. This is the minimum they need to raise. So that needs well, to include so, the land and the first one or three years of operations. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually made, uh, do you know, um, you must know Gabby, uh, Momentum Collective? Yep. yep. Gabby? Okay, great. So I just made their entire business plan, financially modeled the entire <laughs> okay. purpose of a, of a, of a um, retreat center in Costa Rica, a thousand acre project. Nah, 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 nah. I'm currently then now working on the legal front and then the cap table. Like I'm mapping the entire thing for them. Okay? Yeah. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing it half uh, or so partially cash and then partially uh, a three to one sweat equity deal, right? Or like I have a three to one multiplier. So everything you're talking about, I'm actually operating doing for them now, right? Having some small stake in it and blah, 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 but focused more on like, I know that me doing this for them is, is actually, I built a template. I built a template for saying, I know this, this project can regenerate its money in this way. Here mm -hmm. are two ways that I, an operational way of ROI and then a, um, a like assumption based ROI, like uh, price per night, for example, a retreat center based on uh, and percentage occupancy rate. I have grids that show like, okay, if you think the occupancy rate will be 30% and we're getting $70 a night, here's how much ROI you'll have. Like, dude, I fucking, it's down to a science. Excellent, rate. excellent. Yeah, and everyone's freaking out. Like I spoke to lawyers in Costa Rica and they're like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like I've never watched, I, I had a lawyer ask me if I was a lawyer. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm just a son of one, right? But so it's like really, really, really intricate. Um, I've showed this to some investors that maybe you're going to start to come in. We have to raise a certain amount of money for this project, blah, 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 blah. How much money? At what cap well, valuation? I'm determining all of this. At this so market. when you're saying all that, then I think, the, the, again, watch the video I sent you for yesterday, but this is kind uh, of what we're coming to is the same foundation for all of us. And maybe we just bring this all into one piece. This is the, the capital and this is what we want to map is actually you're bringing all of this wisdom. Let's put a number on that. And that's sure. the, your founding cut for this new enterprise we're putting together. I, and then we all work together to grow it. And I think that the talent that's coming to the table for this is just incredible. I'm, um, I'm super happy to do that. And I know that I, I can like, you know, I don't know how often or what cadence you're meeting with these people or where, where you're at. We're trying to do it once a week. Okay, great. So <clears throat> I know that I can probably accelerate at least the, again. My goal is not to be right. My goal is not to say we follow my model. My goal is to say, guys, we can talk about this for a long time. Here's some templates that we can work off of and then grow from there, right? Totally. Like as much as I possibly could be. And I, I want to be wrong in terms of, like, I want you, I want somebody to be like, Mark, you, you can actually think about this little uh, other little piece. Sure. Of that would be fucking amazing. Sure. I'm like, oh, you fucking brilliant motherfucker. And then I, I add that to the model. I'm, I'm just so fucking panicked. I'm, I'm sure you're seeing this. I'm just so goddamn lit up to do that and i don't want to be where i'm not right now is in the conversation like there's a million conversations about coming together to build the essentially the rva with very little infrastructure very little like real world everything and everyone wants somebody else to fund it that's where i don't want to be in that conversation right i'm happy to figure out how to fund it but we have to have some fucking level of foundational infrastructure right sure. and something that we're going with so I love where you're at with this. Like you're literally the only person I've met truly. And you know, it's you. And again, I know it's other people, but like who's actually <laughs> built an infrastructure I can like get behind um, mm -hmm. at this moment. And so I think, you know, I really want to like, like really celebrate you for that. I think it's something very powerful and potent to what you're doing. Um, and sure. I mean, I don't know, you know, what amount of, 
resource money, whatever you, we can value something like this at, how we do that, what that looks like. Um, put it this way, like start, maybe, maybe this is kind of homework for us. I'm going to run forward with the models, templates of these different things. I'm happy to show you those models. Like I feel like I've absorbed a lot of what you've done now. And now I feel like I can start bringing my, my sheets to the table for, for, and to kind of show you what I think mm. um, makes sense. And then we can kind of go back and forth on that conversation. I've done less of the documentation on it for now, but it's coming. And I've got a very great ecosystem for making documentation very quickly because I have a multicam system and the company that actually made this multicam system hired me to do their marketing now. Anyway, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's truly amazing. Every tool I use is now wanting to hire me to, to promote how I use the tool. Um, it, I'm in a very... Yeah, I'm in a very interesting state where I just need to, I, I think I want to spend less time raising capital, but I know I can do the storytelling. Um, and I also know I can raise capital, like I will, and I am raising capital, but I'm, it's like the more time I can spend doing the template and the more time I can test it and then document the test, Whoa. the better I think the ecosystem will Work. I'm going to project onto you and I'm going to make sure. an assumption that you might want to work with other founders. You're saying you can sure. do all of these things, but you're one human. So you need other well, humans. Of course I want to. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not, of, yeah. of, course, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, here, I was, I was actually going to share with you because you're talking about you having this NFTs and it being a year out. I actually want to say, no, let's make it a month out and let's use them now. Well, I think the uh, NFTs could be sooner. I think the- maybe the, here's them selling their, these are just graphical NFTs, but we could do it really cool where you already are selling your garlic NFTs right from the get-go. I'm, I, so That's I have buyers. That's how kind of works is to sell, you know, what backers I, what I find, when it got this NFT, et cetera. What I find fascinating and what I haven't done a lot of is like understanding the Discord, um, let's say conversation, if that makes sense. I have not participated. I've not been in the weeds of that convo and why and certain things are going out and how they're going out i'm like a little behind on the nft game but i'm not behind on why it's disruptive i'm not behind on like what i think i'm doing which is bridging utility and um so essentially a mix between commodity and security sure. NFT. that's the way I'm, I'm seeing it and like much less speculative um, and not also not only access based or like you part of the you know board eight yacht club therefore you get to come to our parties or whatever thing, but like more well conscious version of that to some degree. But also like no, here's a very physical thing. Like your NFT represents something in the real world. Totally. And, and then well, and all the village tokens we want to represent fractional ownership of the village. So of the village is backed by the land and the resources. So that's what gives them their floor price. Is we're saying, okay, if all that's of this exactly. fails and goes to crap and we sell it, you're going to get at least this much per token. That's cool. exactly. But right. then we get to do all the fun stuff to give it that market price, which is going to be above that floor price. Well, and the hype and all the things. And then when do you put that out publicly? When do you do private versions of that? At what pace? At what scale? How many do you mint? Right. Everyone's talking about like, oh, we're making 10,000, 11,000 NFTs. I'm like, man, that's way too many. Like you're over, you're just, it's cash grabs. Essentially. We're in a, we're in a hype 100%. cash grab. We're in the 2017 moment of, of crypto if, oh, if, in a sense with NFTs. Totally. For sure. so that's exactly where we're at. I, I know that I see the pattern clear. Um, and I know the functionality or the, the utility. Well, are going to win. another reason why it's happening is crypto is, you know, as a market two and a half trillion. That means a yeah. lot of people are millionaires and billionaires and they're looking to diversify. All they yeah. have is crypto. Awesome. That's why there's another reason to do this now yeah. is because people want to diversify. It also looks like a bear market might be coming. They would love to put their value into asset backed tokens that oh, represent I physical land, physical ownership of something real, a village that's existing and doing something incredible and funding the regenerative renaissance. This will be huge. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's do it now. We'll do the fundraising for the 12 cohorts like within the next couple of months. And Good. then we'll bring all those funds to, yeah. So that's, I, what, I'm, that's I'm, where we're at a mate right now. And I'm saying the NFTs and stuff, we can do that now. So if you already have graphics for that, great. Make some more because that's going to be on the campaign that's launching. And oh, I'm into it. I, 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 I want to start small, but again, <clears throat> I, I say that. And at the exact same time, I know, I know that once I have the model, it's rinse and repeatable. Meaning sure. 10 garlic rows, 
Right. That works. Boom. I already have like the, the chicken one, which we're going to start with eggs. And then I have a, I've figured out a, a structure from like a, even the graphics of the NFTs, all our original NFTs that then multiply into other NFTs um, by replanting or birthing. Let's well, say. so here's the templates I want to do to bring it a high level. I love everything you're doing. And that's a template for a market garden village. Yes. Right. But yeah. we want a template for an aerospace engineer village. You know, there's no oh. reason why everyone who's building freaking rocket ships to Mars, like why are they re- living it's in regenerative same... villages too and co-owning their land and having common stewardship. So we want to build templates for literally everything. We want a neighborhood who wants to, you know, knock down their fences and build a village and kind of have their decentralized HOA. Awesome. Oh, I've got the <laughs> like right so person. many different ways we can regenerate. And bring I've got the right person who's willing to like yeah. sit with me for a half hour, hour, and then like hear out an idea and then go make a template, come back to me with like elements of that template. Like I've got a person right now dedicated on my team, paid oh, full-time excellent. or like part-time, I'd say, but becoming more and more full-time to do Templates just here. that. But yeah, <laughs> working with me to then say, okay, I need you to template this thing, go. And then, and then I'm, what I'm doing is I'm funding it through client work. Meaning I have a client, I'm like, okay, here's the thing. Here's what we're going to do for this client, but here's the template I want you to build first. Then we're going to apply it to the client. Totally. Right? That makes, I and love that's, that. that's how I'm operating right now. And so I have a lot of templates for a lot of things. Um, but I agree with what you're saying. Like I, it, it shouldn't just be a market garden or permaculture type. But I think that's awesome. And that's it's what a I'm first saying. Thing. And it would sure. be Valhalla. And I even love this concept. We could have Valhalla runes, you know, and you have all the different coordination apps and templates that runes. you build. We just that's call them exactly. all the runes of Valhalla. And you can have this brand within the whole HIFA ecosystem that, where that's exactly people right. want to run a successful market garden, you know, go check out the Valhalla runes. They've got all the templates and tools, you know? <laughs> I, and I think, I think that there's a value even in saying like, Hey, you want to be a part of the first cohort that's going to go through a X period process to learn how to build your own eco village or get it going and start with these templates and understand them and how, and then, you know, move them into your own version of this thing. I see NFTs for that, like, or, or a mm. version of a token or an, an initial offering for that. I mean, um, cause I know that there's an enormous amount of people that would be willing to sit down with me and with people like me, um, for their version of that. Right. And yep. people like you too. So, so, and I well, think there's different wisdom that you bring and the different wisdom I bring to the table on those initial steps, if that makes sense to building a community. hundred percent. And there's, there's one other, <laughs> this is a problem with you being so generalist is we need to maybe get a little bit better at specializing because there's a million things we want to do, but we can't do them all. Anyway, no. something else I think is huge and it's come up in a couple of these other founder conversations is the media around it and the storytelling. You know, Netflix is dominating the world. What's it all about? It's dystopia. It's the world going to shit. It's us fucking everything up, which I get it, but that's magic. And we're all putting that into our consciousness. We're creating that reality. And that's where life's going. You know, Hollywood has so much power and influence over the direction of humanity by like painting the vision of the future, you know? So we need to paint a different vision. So I think media is a huge part with showing, you know, how these villages work, what they look like, what the quality of life is like, you know, dispel all of the BS around, you know, what a commune looks like and how terrible it is. It's like, no, we are tribal individuals. Everyone's missing community. Like, yep. you know, no one's all, no one's all needs are met. I'm going to say that no one's all needs are met. No. We're doing a terrible job as a, as you know, a human race goes, let's actually build villages designed intentionally to meet our needs. That's not saying let's build house and shelter. That's purpose. That's understanding. That's acceptance. All of these other needs that aren't going on. Let's yep. look at how we could actually build it as a community. And let's talk about this, you know, and it's the narrative. So the storytelling is huge, huge, huge. So I see that being, you know, if not the most important thing we're doing, it, it probably is. I think it's an part. initial seed that we need to fund, if that makes sense. That seed totally. needs watering immediately. I think there's a template seed and uh, then, and then uh, we try it in a sandbox environment, Valhalla being an example of such, not the only, but, but one that I fully have an ecosystem around. And then, and then I, I and well, the community documents that. we. Have. I'd like to make a proposal to Haifa to fund a team to build that initial right. video. And Let's, how I'm seeing is it's like coming from 2030, we're living in regenerative. I would love to make a three minute video that's like this. 2030, it starts off regenerative village, just what it looks like. And that's like maybe even recorded at your location showing sure. like your house and the environment and you walk outside and pick your breakfast, you know, sure. like I wake sure. up in the morning and pick my breakfast off a tree. Yeah, vision Awesome. Vision. You know, Our how did, how did we get there? And then the have like greater a reset. Steps. 
Well, right. yeah, the regenerative renaissance or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm making a, a great reset joke, but yes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm more sure. timing, come on. <laughs> Give us some I more know. time. I, <laughs> um, but then the video over just two minutes, it just very practically steps back. How did we get there? And it talks about everything we've been sharing today, a little brief about we crowdfunded in 2022 to bring all of our resources together to do it, you know, blah, blah. And we just kind of have this like step-by-step -step really brief process so that people in three minutes could be like, oh shit, we could be in regenerative civilizations. Here's a plan. There's a blueprint to get us there. Like, here's the process. Like, fantastic and that's kind of like the teaser that one brings them into the funding campaigns to be like yep i want to be a part of this um and let's launch all that in the next couple months so that's kind of the, the immediate thing i see is the storytelling so, is here's the more beautiful world we're creating we're doing it right now come join the renaissance these are the steps and and, and then fund the essentially fund the the document like fund the show on the show that's going to yeah, show you 100 percent and then fund the first 12 villages. Um, maybe us as RVA, maybe we're getting a small cut of that, or maybe we're just getting a share of all the villages for helping them. We'll work out some agreement where we take care of our needs for this first cohort. I think it's um, a mix of them investing a little bit and then also taking a stake. I agree with that. I agree with your model. I do think that you should invest a little bit because then they're going to show up powerfully. Totally. Yeah, so if they raise, you know, maybe we take 5% of the raise or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. But that would then go into a shared pool. We would be a DAO too. So that would be community owned funds that are all directed towards, again, serving this vision. So, it's, yeah. you know, it's really cool how that all kind of unfolds together once you get DAOs on DAOs and you know, DAOs integrating right. with DAOs. It's so cool. Um, and that's, you know, the last piece I want to speak about. That's where we kind of get rid of this concept of failure. If we're templatizing everything, if we're learning from everything, and if we're an integrated ecosystem, okay, so one village, they launch, whatever reason it is, they failed. All right, well, we get to learn from that failure as an ecosystem. We could sell the land, you know, everyone could get their value back out their tokens. But then those people, if they still want to be part of this, they could just emerge, you know, or, or go to the next village or be absorbed or by the rest buy, of the ecosystem. Buy the existing village and, and reboot it. There are a million exactly. ways that that can happen. Yeah. So we could start moving as a whole ecosystem and actually get rid of this concept of startup failure. And that's where we get even more interesting as an index fund. You know, VC is like they're investing in a lot of stuff, but all the stuff they're investing in, they're not all collaborating. They're not co-invested together. They're not sharing the same purpose. Very unlikely. Oh, yeah. Like, they don't have an ecosystem you know? of working. Like they they are if they're doing, if they're investing in like an accelerator-ish, right? Like a Y Combinator is a version of a shared pool learning system but not all the companies are linked and and anyway i agree with yeah i love what you're saying fully agree okay so next steps because I, I do have to go here and I, I think you do too but um next steps let's talk proposals on i guess two fronts the template I, i'm gonna work on that and run that and like maybe what do we see and is there versions of templates that you think that we should i should start working on and, and again like I can make drafts. My goal here is not to be right or to be the, the, the dictator of anything. It's more to just give like, here's what I've learned. Here's the first draft. Let's, let's build from there. Sure. And, and, um, and then I guess the second would be a may, maybe a media campaign around like, like the implementation of this, like the journey to adopting even like a Haifa, like, and DAO or DHO style um, um, uh, ecosystem. Like sure. is that, it's a process well, in and of itself. 100%. And a general call to action. You know, people are tired, COVID, lockdown, BS, yeah. the new world order, all that happening. Yeah. This is like, no, nope, um, here's our stake in the ground, the gender renaissance, we're building a new world. We're getting yeah. really practical, like that kind of call to action, I think is really powerful. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that's why I see all of that built into that. But the yeah. only reason so we're going to get it. Yeah. All right. Well, then let me add you to the, an upcoming call uh, you run right now because it's right on time. Um, and then watch that video. I'll share this one with them so they can get an idea of you. And then I'll invite you to the upcoming call. Um, and then we could just hit the ground running. Okay, great. Love it. Dude, always a fucking, always a pleasure. <laughs> Happy brother. Do me a favor. Good. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> you too, buddy. Cheers, brother. Good. All right, bye.